Hello, hi, this is Stephanie Lindloff from Our Natural Wisdom. Thanks for joining me for another soulful gardening moment. Always so fun to come and share some practical gardening wisdom with you and infuse it with mystical wisdom and a simple mindfulness practice that you can start immediately after we um, finish up our live. And hi Kay, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. All right, so I'm gonna get right into it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about roots, thoughts, and tending boundaries. And um, there's a lot to get into on this one, so it'll be interesting. It might be a two-parter. <laughs> But I was um, recently doing some weeding, pulling some weeds, as we all do in the garden at time to time. Although I will say that I pull considerably fewer weeds with native gardens as opposed to more like ornamental cultivated gardens. And um, which I love, 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 love that. Um, and as I was pulling the weeds, I was really paying attention to the root structures and thinking about what we can learn and what messages are coming forth through that activity and they definitely did when I opened myself up to it it was just like a flood of of information and so I wanted to share with you first some practical information about root structures the types of root structures that we see throughout plants um, whether they are native or non-native plants and um, so we'll get right into it. I've got some examples. The first kind of root structure, which we see a lot with native plants, is the taproot root structure, which is, as it sounds, it's a really long root, um, sometimes with little bits of fibrous roots coming out from it, from the main root. Sometimes these roots in um, like prairie plants, compass plants, it can be 15 feet deep into the earth. So that's pretty amazing. A lot of our native, especially prairie plants, have long... Hi, Jen. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. A lot of our native prairie plants especially have really long tap roots. And roots, of course, are a means of supporting a plant, just as your energetic roots do, okay? Imagining those roots that you have that extend from your body down into the earth and imagining they're very similar to these taproot structures from the native prairie plants. These provide you stability, provide the plant stability and you, and um, really provide access to the nutrients that are necessary to water that is necessary to the plant, just as your connection with your root structure provides you connection with earth energy, with the ability to obtain um, more stability and comfort where you are. And I don't have an example of a taproot structure because they are so long, um, so I didn't actually pull one out of the ground to show you, but I think you can imagine it in your head. All right, so in terms of its connection to your thoughts, I the message that I was receiving the other day was that these taproot structures are like our core beliefs. They're like these things that we we feel so deeply and a belief is is a thought that we have had over and over and over and over and over again and it becomes a belief now our beliefs can be very they can serve us in beautiful ways they can also be limiting they can be self-limiting like um i could never do that or um you know i am not enough these types of things can become these deeply rooted thoughts that we have. So this is just a, a way of like visualizing our thoughts as roots. Okay, I'm going to jump to the next kind of a root structure, which we see a lot also in um, prairie plants. This is a more fibrous root structure. This is a the uh, roots of a little blue stem um, grass, which is native throughout much of the United States and, and Canada. And you can see that the root structures, there's not a big tap root. There's a lot of fibrous roots extending out from the base of the plant. And this allows the plant to grow and expand from the center out to create a clump, a clumping kind of growth habit that is, um, it spreads, not 
quickly, but over time, and it spreads very um, in a very stable way because it is constantly it is constantly expanding from that central root structure from the crown of the plant. This actually makes these types of plants very easy to transplant in your garden. It's really just, a, this is a very small one obviously, but it's really just a matter of cutting down through the center of the root structure, separating it out, and then you can replant them in different ways. And I kind of got to thinking about this as, you know, in terms of thoughts, that we have these, these thoughts, again, it could be thoughts that serve you or thoughts that are self-limiting. And you would have to make that, um, you know, decision, that discernment on your own, where you can decide, okay, I really want to cultivate this thought. I want this thought to s grow and spread from the center out so that it really provides this fortification, this stability, this base of support and allow it to really expand into many areas of your life. All right, so that is, um, and we see a lot of our native plants have this, not just grasses, but also um, a lot of the spring ephemeral wa uh, wildflowers such as shooting star and um, hepatica, they have those types of root structures, which is interesting because they're coming up, they're the first plants that come up in the spring and they are they don't have those deep tap roots. They are expanding. They are. They have that base of stability that allows them to tap into everything that they need to flourish in somewhat difficult conditions in the early part of spring. You know, it could be cold. There could be snow. There could be frost, and and animals could be interested in them because they're nice and um, you know juicy, tender uh, leaves in the beginning of the season. So this is another way to think about how these types of fibrous roots, the ones that expand out from the center, are um, you know, similar to thoughts that you have that you want to cultivate and you want to allow them to expand and provide you with that base of support that will serve you even in those rough times, those challenging times. Okay, so moving right along, we've got, um, something that we see in a lot of lawns, ours included, Creeping Charlie, which is a, it's a creeper stem. So the stem creeps along the ground and then once it hits the ground, especially in a moist conditions, it sh sends down these root structures. Okay, so this is one long stem that just expands along itself and creeps along this way. Now, Creeping Charlie is not an especially mm, loved <laughs> plant. A lot of people, it's obviously a non-native. It is aggr aggressive and invasive and can get really um, woven into, especially these kinds of roots. It can get really woven into that, which is why it tends to populate our lawns, especially like the, you know, traditional kind of uh, turf grass lawns because it gets interwoven. Its, its roots get interwoven into these fibrous roots, making it difficult to remove. If Creeping Charlie gets into a place that has a lot of taproot plants um, or is just on bare dirt, it's very easy to pull up because it hasn't had something to, to weave its way into and get entangled with. And this again is kind of like our thoughts, right? It's, it's a, um, you know, a way of thinking about how certain thoughts have a way of creeping along. And when we allow them energy, when we give them energy, when, when we give them those conditions to take hold, they will, they will attach their roots and then they will send out a runner and they will keep on going. And this is, I feel, an important thing to think about when we're, when we're mindful and observing our thoughts and seeing how particular thoughts, especially those that don't serve us, have a way of creeping around and popping up in places, in circumstances and in conditions where you wouldn't expect them to pop up because you had that thought a while back, but all of a sudden it's rearing its head in this particular other circumstance. So when we have a thought like that, you know, being observant of how it is, how 
it has threaded itself through our our mindset and allowing ourselves to observe it first of all and understand that we have the ability to take out that root structure. We have the ability to pull that thought from our mindset. And the last roots that I wanted to just point out to you are kind of combined bulbs and rhizomes. This is uh, um, actually a non-native iris variety. Um, and then this is a, a daylily, a tiger lily that we see all over the place. Now, bulbs and um, rhizomes are storage structures for plants. And I have heard, I think it's correct across the board, that a rhizome will only bloom once. So this is why we like to divide our um, irises. We have blue flag iris, which is a beautiful native. Um, you irises, I'm sorry, um, the rhizomes are also the root structure of bloodroot, of um, Virginia bluebells, other native plants. So these are root structures that um, the rhizome is the storage function for the plant. It sends out the, the flower, the foliage and the flower, and then the rhizome sends out additional um, fibrous roots that create another rhizome and another rhizome, and they, they spread more slowly than, say, um, this kind of a root structure, the fibrous root structure, but the rhizomes extend out from the base of the plant. And I was thinking about how these kinds of root structures are another wonderful example of how our thinking can provide us with the nutrients and everything that we need in order to expand out from one structure, as long as we are tending to our thoughts well, which is what comes brings me to the whole concept of tending our boundaries and being aware of boundaries that we have set around our time, around how we are to be treated, around how we wish to um, behave and uh, act in the world, the boundaries that we set for ourselves and the boundaries that we set for others. Being a aware of the thoughts that happen around those boundaries and becoming more attuned to whether we are providing ourselves with those root structures, with those thought structures that go deep, that provide us with energy, that provide us with nutrients, that provide us with a foundation and stability. These are the ones that we want to tend most carefully around our boundaries. And of course, those creeping roots, right? We have to be aware of how those creeping roots can get into places that we don't want them to be. Like we don't want to plant a plant that has creeping roots right next to a path, for instance, or right next to a plant that we are really trying to tend to allow it to spread. We don't want those creeping roots to get in there. So again, being mindful of how our thoughts are like roots and what types of thoughts we want to be cultivating for ourselves pertaining to the boundaries that we set in our lives. That was a lot of information. I hope that that message resonates for you. I would love to hear if it does. Let me know in the comments in um, just the moment that we, the minute that we have remaining. It was so good to have you join today. And if this is your jam, if you're into gardening and learning about the practical applications of gardening, but also infusing it with thought management and a bit of mystical wisdom as well, then I lovingly invite you to join the wait list for my upcoming class, Soulful Gardening with Nature. It's a 30 day online class that teaches you all of the essentials to creating a vibrant native garden, but also infuses it with mystical wisdom and thought management practices that will serve you so beautifully for years to come. You can join the wait list by clicking on the link in bio, and I look forward to joining you again next Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Central 
for another soulful gardening moment and it'll be the autumn equinox next Thursday so you can be sure that that will be the theme of our soulful gardening moment. I look forward to hearing from you and thanks again for joining. All right, have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.